Yo, yo, yo. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, JR Bless, coming at you guys with another video. Now, today, we're going to be talking about some news. We got some breaking news, man. Tony Ferguson versus Benil Dariush is in the works for UFC 262 on May 15th, 2021. Now, um, we know the story with Tony, how this whole thing has been going for him. Um, it's been pretty unfortunate how you know how his career has played out honestly because to go on such a long win streak and be undefeated for so many years and to never to still not have gotten your rightful deserving title shot you know what i mean i don't care about what happens with none of that if you're on that long of a win streak you deserve a title shot like the ufc should do everything in their power and you know i'm gonna give them their credit because they did but injuries happen but you know you just have to kind of keep playing that game to make sure that that fighter gets his title shot because it's like for an example being the number one seed in the playoffs and never really getting to like compete for the championship you know what i mean never really getting to go to the finals because essentially that's what it is when you win all those fights you know for fighters their playoffs is basically every single fight and then when they get to the finals it's the title shot so tony ferguson was supposed to be in the finals he was supposed to get his title shot but he never got it so what we got right in here is former ultimate fighting champion, interim 155 champion, Tony Ferguson will try to snap the first two fight losing streak of his career when he goes to war with veteran lightweight Benil Dariush at the upcoming UFC 262 pay-per-view event. Now, as you guys know, or if you guys don't know, Benil Dariush is actually on a roll right now. I'm going to actually check, but he's on a pretty good, you know, fight streak. He's kind of had like a career like a, a reviving of his career kind of like just this is a brand new Benil Dariush um definitely has some knockout power decent ground game so he could definitely do some things out there um and it's kind of you know it's not worrying like I'm a Tony Ferguson fan but um you know this is kind of his last chance to prove that okay he's still here but yeah Benil Dariush hasn't lost a fight since 2018 he's on a one two three four five six fight streak um, and he's earned his sh shot to, you know, get a top level guy. Like I said, he's on a six fight win streak, has not lost since 2018. So shout out to, ben um, to Benil Dariush. But um, yeah, I'm not sure how this fight is going to play out. And the reason why I say I'm not sure how this fight is going to play out is simply because of the fact of how Tony Ferguson's last two fights have gone. Um, you know, when he fought Gaethje in May of 2020, I think it was, UFC 249, a lot was going on, um, you know, and I have a lot of respect for those fighters that ended up fighting on that 249 car because there was so much going on. That was like the very beginning of the pandemic. There was so much uncertainty. The UFC was the only sport that was going on. Um, Tony was going through yet again all this drama with Khabib not being able to make it. You know, them sending Khabib out back to Russia because, you know, they thought that the fight was going to be in Abu Dhabi which obviously we all know how that turned out. Fight Island ended up being on Abu Dhabi, so that was actually a real thing. Um, and it was just unfortunate, bro. Like, there were so many things that just ruined that Tony Ferguson versus Khabib fight all the way up to a global pandemic. So it's like, I don't know. I still want to see that fight, but you know how it is with the fans and with UFC is what have you done for me lately. So yeah, this is Tony Ferguson's last shot. But yeah, like I was saying with that UFC 249 card, Tony Ferguson ended up fighting Gaethje and you know before that fight I really felt like the weight cut that he did you know prior to the first fight being canceled because remember they were supposed to do it a little bit earlier than whenever they did it in May but that one got canceled and Tony Ferguson decided to still cut weight so he ended up cutting weight and then obviously he rehydrated and things like that and then when the fight came around the second time you know officially he cut weight again so he had two weight cuts in the short span of about like two to four weeks and then he fought so i felt like that really really affected his performance um you know in the second round i think in the ending of the second round he almost knocked justin gaethje out like he hit him with a nice uppercut you know almost finished him at the end of the second round if there's any more time left you know it would have been over gaethje would have got finished but then obviously tony just started to get beat up and all of that and then we know how the next fight went in December, I forgot what you, I think it was UFC 252, I think it was, either 252 or 251, one of them. Um, I could be completely off, but um, 
yeah it was tony ferguson versus charles Oliveira, and charles Oliveira, in a way kind of reminds me of tony ferguson like his fight style the the striking you know the crazy striking great jujitsu um and tony just got absolutely dominated i think it was obviously because his arm got hyper extended from that arm bar that Oliveira had him in and then that pretty much just toasted his arm so he couldn't strike no longer but no excuses i won't make for him he lost the fight so that's two back-to-back -back fights one of them he got absolutely outstruck and the second one he got absolutely out wrestled so obviously everybody thinks that oh it's over for tony so i feel like you know this is his last chance to prove that he's still elite because you got guys like michael chandler coming in getting a knockout over dan hooker when dustin poirier already beat him up and then all of a sudden michael chandler is supposed to be this top guy and stuff like that he's very talented but michael chandler has lost his you know what i'm saying he got knocked out by um by pitbull from uh, bellator a 145er so it's like it's not like michael chandler can't be stopped um but hey like i said in mma it's what have you done for me lately so yeah tony ferguson was on a 12 fight win streak um he hadn't lost before 2020 he hadn't lost since 2012 so he was Pretty much eight years in a row undefeated. Not undefeated, but eight years since he took a loss. Then all of a sudden, he takes two losses last year. He rushed into the, the Oliveira fight. I felt like he should have took the rest of the year off after the fight that he had with Gaethje. But he decided to fight Oliveira, and it didn't go well for him. So here it is. Here's a, here's a chance, his last chance. Because once you go on three in a row, it's, probably, it's almost, you know, you're on the verge of fighting for your job at that point. So, um, yeah. Um, we'll see how this fight goes. Like I said, I'm a Tony Ferguson fan, so I I really wish him the best. I really hope he gets his title shot. My three favorite fighters are Tony Ferguson, Dustin Poirier, and Max Holloway. Um, you know, Max Holloway's been a champion. He's still a champion in my in my eyes. Uh, Dustin Poirier's been an interim champion. He's only lost to Khabib in like the, his last ten fights, so he's been really elite. And then Ferguson has been really elite too. Other than the last two losses, he you know big deal. He's won. 12 out of his last 14 fights. Oh, my God. Tony Ferguson is such a bad fighter. Yeah, I know how I go, man. But make sure y'all tune in, man. UFC 261 or 262, May 15th. Tony Ferguson versus Bedo Dariush. Um, it's going to be great, bro. This is Tony Ferguson's chance. He's going to shine. And I, I believe in him, man. I believe in him until the end. So it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys are excited for this fight. And let me know if there's any MMA topics you guys want me to cover. And I will cover that for you guys. But it's pretty much it for now. It's your boy, Jared Bless. I'm out, and I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Peace. Gang, they cannot do it like him. Uh, uh huh. Nobody shooting like him. Gang, nobody doing like him. That nigga hate everyone because he broke, and that's why he fight like him. Gang, SD Glow, now he talking this shit.